<laughs> Alright, we'll switch it here in a sec. In between the next goal, we, we, we talked about what color they're going to be at the start of the match. They agreed that Aegeus, aka Obama, would be blue. And then Chronic just took blue to start. Alright, Chronic is going to score right away. And we will put Chronic on the blue. And Aegeus, sorry you guys don't get to see this very nice shot by uh, Chronic played again. 1-0 for Chronic. A little bit of spicy, uh, a little bit of spicy pre-talk from these guys. That's what it's called, right? Pre-talk. I'm pretty sure that's the official way that everybody talks about um, when there's trash talk before a game. But Chronic mentioned in the last game, if you're watching it on YouTube or if you're here from earlier, saying, "Well, I'm gonna beat Aegeus, right? So I'm gonna go two and one. That means I make it through, right?" <laughs> Already assuming he's gonna get the win against Aegeus. Aegeus, I think, took it on, you know, on the cheek or wasn't too bummed about the trash talk. Is ready to try and see if he can take Chronic down. He has seemed like he's been on the grind recently. And he's had his eyes set on both Chronic and Daniel, I'd say. He has seen them as, you know, a great test, an opportunity to show what he can do. Chronic at the start of this one, up 3-0. So we'll see if Aegeus, aka playing in a different account today, named Obama and also didn't want to switch it for this. I guess he just wants to play as Obama today. But Chronic at the start, up 3-0. Aegeus, a nice ground shot. Booming it off the ground to the far corner. Chronic unable to get up and make it a, a save. We're here on Utopia Coliseum Dusk. Hopefully Aegeus doesn't hate this one as, last, as, last, as much as the last one. Chronic back to the skies. The double flip reset. Chronic crossbar and down. Can he finish it? No, Aegeus able to save it away. Chronic is back to his old ways, man. I tell you what, maybe just because Daniel is such a high level defender, he was not letting Chronic get into his rhythm like that. We're, we're so used to basically Chronic show matches just being him taking up wall to air dribbles and ripping as many clips as he possibly can. And he's done that effectively to win almost every series he's played on stream. You know, Daniel adds another loss to his list, but he has one of the best winning percentages on stream, and he does it in such crazy fashion. So we see a little bit of that at the start of this one. This time, a backflip off the wall. Aegeus can catch it and take away his second. So when Chronic has been beaten, it has been by the likes of maybe the best player in the world right now, uh, Daniel. That's right, I said it. It's hard to know, but... Um, or he's been playing against guys who are really good at stopping his aerial game, forcing him to play it on the ground and, you know, just kind of completely suffocating him. We'll see how Aegeus plays this one. If he lets Chronic get into his rhythm very much or if he, you know, goes balls to the wall and challenges. We saw Sharp take him down in a very important um, Fear 500 Season 1 game. And he did so just by early challenging right out of the way and just predicting the air dribbles from Chronic every single time. Nice catch from Aegeus. He's going to tie it up. Chronic looking really, really strong at the start of this. Seemed like he might be able to run away with it. He definitely has, you know, the experience of the edge in show matches and tournament settings. So by all means, you know, Chronic has to come into this one as the favorite. But this is not the first time that Aegeus has gone up against somebody who was the favorite in the match. I would argue in his qualifying game, against Evo in the semifinals for his qualifier. Evo was the favorite, as well as his actual qualifying match that ended up getting him here against Wiz, where I would argue Fit Wiz was also the favorite. And then it's hard to tell. You, you could argue that Adverse was the favorite against uh, that match as well, but I think that was you know a pretty even match going in, and Aegeus was able to take the win. So not afraid of playing as the underdog. As he is down by one, four to three. Chronic with a lot of open field and Aegeus with not a lot of boost to get back. But Chronic can't find the angle. Oh man, he had to go for a really tight one. He's continuing to steal all this boost. Aegeus has not been able to reset and he still won't be able to do so as Chronic takes wall to air. Aegeus on the ground with very little boost and Chronic in the air is not a good situation for him and Chronic just clinical dribbles. Look at the way Chronic slows this down. He takes a dribble and in the last couple moments here, he slows it down as he gets a read on the way Aegeus is going to end up challenging. He notices that he can just speed it up. 
and finish it off because Aegis had yet to pre-jump. And he just dribbles it in and gets his fifth. Up two with two minutes left to go. Aegis with lots and lots of space. I'm not exactly sure that was the setup he wanted. It seemed like maybe he was thinking about air dribbling, but maybe he just wanted the double jump to get the ball bouncing. Because a bouncing ball on about a double jump's height is a very dangerous weapon to use. Although he was not really able to get anything out of it this time around. Chronic will lob this one high. Aegeus trying to play physical and really only got a slight tap on Chronic. Chronic has kept this ball for the most part in Aegeus's half. He's once again started the boost starvation on him. AJ is able to hold on to 50. He's trying to pre-jump this play from the wall, and Chronic will get a sixth. This is what Chronic can do to you. You uh, get fed up with trying to defend him from the ground, and you try your best to challenge earlier, but hard thing to do against a player like Chronic. I think after going up 3-0, Aegeus on a three-goal run, now Chronic his own three-goal run to go back up three. 6-3 with a minute left to go, time running out for Aegeus' next run, but he'll start it right now, a demo at midfield, and why is he tapping it in slow? Th that makes no sense to me. I, I know every second doesn't matter that much, but how do you not just rip this one in? Maybe he's trying to get a mental edge. The only uh, upside of you know wasting a few more seconds when you're down is maybe trying to tilt the opponent. But I tell you what, if I was Chronic and I watched my opponent who was uh, behind and wasting seconds, that wouldn't tilt me at all. That would make me excited. Aegeus, a fifth. He is working his way back. Apparently, every single goal is going to be scored in sets of three. Chronic not quite able to pinch this one away. And the continuation shot is well placed, high and on the near post where Chronic is not going to be able to get up into the air. How old is Aegeus? I think he's... Ah, uh, Chad, I always forget. I basically just guess an age between 17 and 19, and I'm usually right. Aegeus! We'll get a sixth. Chronic is 15, I believe. I don't think he's become 16 yet. Aegeus, a nice kickoff setup. Really well-placed shot. Really, really, really well-placed shot. He needed to keep that high. A good pop to set it up, and then a perfect shot to get it out of Chronic's range. He's got another kickoff win. Is he going to break the trend of three goals in a row every time? He's got a dribble from the wall. The low 50 is redirected slightly offline. And Aegeus can't get back. 18 seconds left to go. Chronic is going to have a position of his own to end this game. Aegeus doesn't want to see it as he resets on boost at midfield. Challenges early. Chronic is left on very little. But Aegeus could not get around the ball, so he has to let it all the way back into his corner. Still has an extreme boost advantage. Chronic trying to defend from close. He'll let it hit the ground. Overtime yet again in one of Chronic's games. As game number one will come down to the next goal, Aegeus has looked good on the past three or four kickoffs. He's once again going to have first possession. That being said, he's, as he slowly works this one in, it's obvious Chronic will win out the 50 and grab the boost. So most likely able to grab the first serious actual potential shot attempt possession. His air dribble though, not turning into much. And Aegeus taking a trip out to all the boosts to keep Chronic starved. He's going to force this right back on net. No reason to set it up across the field. Not when he's got a very low boost, low boost defender. And his hook shot forces as tough a possible as save for Chronic. But he gets it out. Hasn't quite been able to reset on boost. Has 30. Approaching a minute into overtime. These guys being very tentative with this ball in the corner. Neither one of them wanting to make the final mistake that will result in a game one loss. Aegeus with space. He's going to go for the air dribble bump. Chronic on the ground. He's able to dodge it. Way too soft and low of an air dribble bump attempt from Aegeus. The dodge of the demo was fairly easy with a lot of extra time with that ball being on the ground. Aegeus, long shot, trying to put Chronic in a tough spot. Chronic able to save it away and a great 50 save. Aegeus, you can see, trying to get above it and get those wheels on top of it to maximize his opportunity to push it past Chronic, but Chronic did a great job. This pinch 
risky situation for Chronic. I'm sure he did not expect Aegis to get that good of a 50, but he'll carry Aegis into a bad spot. Chronic takes a detour to all the boosts. He has looked really, really good when he's gotten Aegis in net with nothing. Aegis knows it and wants to challenge as early as possible. A minute 50 left to go. Chronic in the air. Aegis likely did not get to reset on boost very much, but he does pinch this one high. Can he get back? He cannot. Chronic, after two minutes, is eventually able to score. He has just been too good with a boost advantage and Aegis in the net. He doesn't score on the first, but he's able to get back up sooner to the second as he goes up 1-0 in this best of five. Game number two. Chronic versus Aegeus. Game one, very close, going down to the wire. Chronic ultimately able to take it after a couple good shot attempts from both sides. Chronic lobbing this one up high. I think he was either going for a 50 or a fake, hoping to get Aegeus to miss on the goal line, but instead, Aegeus connects very easily. And there's a free second touch for a goal. Chronic's going to completely fake this diagonal kickoff. And Aegeus will get a goal out of it? Yes, he will. A good read on the fake kickoff and a punishment. We'll see if we ever see another diagonal fake kickoff from Chronic. That one not going very well for him. It didn't seem like the kickoffs were too, too bad for him. He did have a streak of not doing well at a bunch of different positions. Definitely not exclusively the diagonal one. Maybe Chronic just trying to stay ahead of the game in terms of kickoff switch-ups. An easy save and an easy goal. As Aegeus fails to get anything serious on the air dribble. Chronic, what a nice setup off this kickoff. The chip into the musty. This is the kind of the same variety of what Aegeus got the other way on his kickoff, where he made sure to keep the ball at absolute top shelf level all the way to the net. They just both did it differently. Aegeus did it with a nice air roll shot after chipping it to himself. Chronic does it with a musty to scoop it in. Wall to air dribble, Aegeus coming to challenge early, and this is what you earn. You earn yourself some free rolling goals when you're that good in the air. Bronick, a drop down off a kickoff. HGS needs to figure this out. Trying to grab midfield boost and make it back in time. Ended up being a little bit more than he could handle. 4-2. Chronic taking a bit of a lead within this first minute, or just outside this first minute. Chronic to the back corner. Way too strong of a first touch. When you're setting up those dribbles all the way from the back wall, the first touch needs to be kind of soft because you need... You basically need to triple the whole entire field in an arc. So if you immediately set it up right at about ceiling level, you're not going to have enough space to dribble it the rest of the way. So Chronic ended up having to take it down and just trying to pinch it far away from the net. Chronic, a string of goals to go up 5-2. Aegis has an opportunity from midfield. He's going to go for the dribble. Chronic. Jumping as early as he can. Aegeus not able to finish it off. And that last shot attempt was an all-in kind of play. Sitting with zero boost and going for a flip that close to the net. If you don't connect, it will be scored the other way. Chronic. Wow. He is starting to break open this game a little bit. Aegeus has been having a tough time defending immediately off these kickoffs. Chronic's wall to air dribbles are great, and you know it's not really the wrong way to defend it the way Aegeus was set up. If Chronic uses the flip, and Aegeus is in the perfect spot to make that save, you know, at the position closer to the middle of the net, but Chronic is, you know, just as good at making sure that he can use the flip or not, and both of them are shots on net.
Aegis. His shot sent off the post. He has an extreme boost advantage. These are the kind of situations that Chronic has been able to score almost every single time. Can Aegis do the same on the other side of the field? His first shot sent high. Chronic taking a trip out to pick up as many pads as possible. And it seems like he's earned himself a possession and cleared it away. Aegis maybe not as lethal with the boost advantage as Chronic. Right now down five. A bit of a mountain to climb here in game number two. Aegeus catch, low 50 and a third. Aegeus is in the playoffs already, so this doesn't really matter all that much. So one of the things that is really important, um, especially for these matches that might decide the difference between second and third, it could be the difference between, oof, a high shot from Aegeus, wait a second. This is a great setup off the kickoff. As long as Aegeus gets first possession of kickoff, which he's had a hard time doing the past few times, he is great at making plays. This is a great ceiling pinch to double. My goodness. Aegeus. It hurts that it comes off, you know, while down three. He's got a lot more to do to make it worth his while, but a very impressive play. This uh, fake kickoff is not going to work for him as he tries to mix it up. Neither one of these guys fake kickoffs working. Oh, but as I was saying about the positions in the pools, so the difference between getting second and third is who you have to play for or who you have to play against, I should say, in your attempt to make it to the Worlds. So the top four finishing in the region will make it to Worlds. And if you look at the, the playoffs tab, you'll see that basically the two seed from one pool will be playing the three seed. So let's say you're really afraid of Lion Blaze or iRicky, who, you know, by all means are likely to finish first and second in some order, or Wiz, I mean, honestly, any of them. But if you don't want to have to play the second best player in the other pool to make it into the Worlds, you want to finish second in your own so that you can play against the third. Maybe a better example is to think about it in the opposite. You know, you have Daniel, Daniel Chronic, and Aegeus. One of those three will be getting third. So if we're to assume Chronic could finish out this series and Aegeus maybe can't take Daniel down, not saying that's, that's what gonna, what's going to happen. You never know. But if it were, then Aegeus would be entering the playoffs as the three seed, and getting second or third would be the difference between playing Chronic or playing Aegeus. Maybe you have a preference, and you would rather win and play against the lower seeded player on the other side of the pool. Chronic with 18 seconds left to go, a four goal lead. Looking like he is gonna go to two and oh. Aegeus should get at least get a fifth, but he doesn't have a lot of time. In fact, he's gonna cut it. He says, I'd rather not watch some goal replays. I wanna head to game number three. Who's first in this pool? Right now, um, the only undefeated players in the pool are Aegeus and Daniel. So Aegeus and Daniel in this pool are technically, I think Daniel's probably first because he's played a couple more games, or at least one more game and has won. Whereas Aegeus has only won one game. But Chronic will take game number two as we head to game three. Chronic versus Aegeus. Chronic up 2-0. Pulling out the Batmobile power. It's been so, so long since we've seen Chronic in the Batmobile. Aegeus able to get this first possession and this first goal. Good sign for him at the start of game number three. He was able to keep it really, really competitive in game number one. Chronic got a little bit going in uh, the last one as we saw a couple clips and a bit of a blowout as he certainly controlled the game for the majority of it. Four goals, you know, we've seen bigger blowouts, but watching the game, you could tell Chronic was in control the whole time. Aegeus not really able to work it back. So not a bad start to game number three. The reverse sweep is going to need to come out here from Aegeus. He's up 1-0 as he searches for a demo on Chronic in the back line. Doesn't get it. Chronic versus Daniel. Oh, sorry. Chronic versus Aegeus. Um, 
sometimes when I start talking about other people in the pool or other names, I mix it up. I, I do it a lot when, when other uh, players come start talking in chat and I see their name. I'll just accidentally slip it in. How do you flip reset on the Batmobile? I'm not sure. I, I wonder if you ask Chronic or these guys who play in the Batmobile, I wonder if they think it's that much harder. I know the, the freestylers use the breakout, I assume because it you know it's not a long car and, and makes flip resets the easiest. Aegis is going to get a second at the start of this game number three. He has been able to go up 2-0. Chronic trying to shadow around that midfield on the wall and that super low profile uh, Batmobile is not going to cut it for him this time. That being said, he is completely want to kick off. He's going for one flip reset. He's going for two. Did he get the second? Oh, he must not have. He definitely would have used the second. You might as well flex and use the second flip if he had gotten it. One goal for Chronic, two for Aegeus. It may be stylish, but not worth multiple points. In your opinion, it's one of the easiest cars to reset in? The uh, Batmobile? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't reset enough myself. You know, I'm not exactly a reset master, so I'm not about to go out here and claim which cars are easier to do it with. Chronic thought he had an opportunity to set up a dribble. Was hovering around this midfield. This high pop, you notice he doesn't bail on it right away. He's just thinking about how he's going to set up his play off the wall. Didn't recognize that Aegeus is going to be able to tap it past. So a 3-1 lead. This is what we needed to see from Aegeus. We saw him get out to an early lead in game one. He was able to keep that one close before Chronic brought it to a tie and sent it to overtime. Chronic will get a second. A nice challenge in midfield. Aegeus just caught watching. Chronic with open field, taking it to the wall like we know him to do. He's going to go off the ceiling this time. Doesn't connect, but has he gotten the recovery? Ooh, not that far away. You can see Aegeus trying to make up, break up the play before it even started, which is a good thing to do against a guy like Chronic. He attempted to, um, you know, put himself in the mix on the wall, but he ended up just helping the setup. Chronic took it off the ceiling. And sometimes, on rare occasions, he doesn't execute correctly. And Aegis is going to get his free counterattack. 4-2. Nice outplay in the corner. Chronic trying to stick with the ball. And we saw this in Adverse's game. Well, we see it again. Adverse stopped the ball completely on the goal line, and Chronic refused to come. I mean, <laughs> why do people do this? Because they'll win the game if you don't come back. All right, he came close enough. He didn't really end up going for the ball. Aegeus will get his fifth. He doesn't miss it like Adverse did. After like a full minute or two and Chronic talking in chat about why this happened, Adverse ended up missing it. But Aegeus does not do the same. He does get his goal. Just went to the Cowd match. Was Cowd in good form? Oh, you went to it on YouTube? We got more Khaled matches coming next couple days. Aegeus taking to the skies all the way from his back half, but not an easy thing to do as he is forced to basically tap it away. And Chronic will flip it above. So it comes down to the AGS offensive attempt. He could have gone with whatever he wanted. He elected to go air dribble. Came away with nothing. And then his quick challenge, maybe frustrated that he gave up possession so easily. Maybe just not trying to let Chronic get into his groove. But either way, Chronic makes a good read. Flicks it above. Gets his fourth. And a minute 20 left to go. Chronic, I'm sure, hoping to get the sweep. But not a lot of time left on the clock to come back. In fact, AGS is going to push it back out to two as he just flicks it away in his own half. 
Bronick challenging late. You're super curious to see how TRK will perform. Yeah, uh, so am I. I think uh, I think TRK could be really, really exciting. We've only seen him in that one match against Lion Blaze where Lion Blaze had 16 kajillion ping. So it's really hard to know, um, you know how he matches up just off that one game. But we have a lot more to come. He's going to have an opportunity to match up against basically any and everyone if he continues to win. 45 seconds left on this clock. Chronic with 25 boost. He's got the power of the Batmobile. Sometimes players playing in a flat car, especially the Batmobile with low boost, they can find a way to shoot without anything, just off of flicking with their flat car. But Chronic's had enough. Down three, 37 left to go. A few good kickups in a row could certainly bring him back. He doesn't want to do it. He'd rather move on. So AG is going to take a game. Chronic versus Aegeus. Aegeus able to take a game. Every game so, so important. Not only because it gets him closer to the reverse sweep against Chronic here, but even if he ends up maybe only forcing it to game five, grabbing a couple more games, and then able to beat Daniel, then that uh, that goal differential will be, or that game differential will be really huge. The tiebreaker is game differential between these guys if they do ever end up tying. And so if Aegis were to go on to, you know, maybe not win this series, but win the series against Daniel, he'd be tied with Chronic 2-1. to one, And the game differential could push him above. But of course, that's not what uh, Aegis is thinking about right now. He's not interested in just getting games. I'm sure he is wanting to actually win this series. I know he thinks he's capable. And I can't disagree as he takes game number three. This time, not clearing this strong enough into the corner. Chronic, a low dribble with the uh, Batmobile. You know, he's snaking back and forth underneath it, which usually results in popping it pretty high, but you can get away with doing it fairly low in the Batmobile. Chronic pops that one high, trying to put Aegis in a tough spot. Was able to steal the midfield boost, but ultimately, Aegeus wins the race to the corner, and the counter will make it in. He'll demo Chronic in the process. 2-1. Chronic with the lead, or sorry, Aegeus with the lead once again. The kickoff battle has been fairly even, as these guys have been streaky back and forth. Chronic. Trying to outpace an Aegeus who is shadowing deep in his half. But Aegeus able to just carry Chronic out of the way. Aegeus, his wall dribble stopped immediately. Chronic has been really favoring defending those dribbles by coming off the ceiling right away. Nice flick. The Batmobile will flick it past Aegeus as he turns to challenge. There have been a lot of situations like this where Chronic has gotten the read and flicked it above. Aegeus obviously has a game plan to try and challenge Chronic early on the dribbles. We'll see if he ends up mixing it up because Chronic has made the reads and has been flicking a lot of these past him. It's such a daunting task though to sit in net and just let Chronic hold possession. You know, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Aegeus just continues to stick to the early challenges and not let um, not let Chronic really get, ever get anything going. A nice chip off the back wall above Chronic who is trying to stay in the play himself. 3-2. Chronic, can he find a way to score this? I've watched him too much to not believe. And the first touch is nowhere near the net, like straight out to midfield. But of course, Chronic catches it, carries it to the net, flip reset, and sets up the 50 as he grabs the third. Hootie hoo, thank you for the raid of 32 million, my man. Welcome to the Fear Fest, guys. We got Chronic versus Aegeus. Chronic up 2-1. Aegeus looking to get the reverse sweep. A fake kickoff is not punished. Chronic doing his best to 
to uh, fake every which direction and AJ is able to cover it all. AJ is ceiling reset, or sorry, flip reset, but right near the ceiling. Chronic able to save it away. Chronic's defense against the aerial game has been really, really good. As a player who knows how it works himself, he's got easy reads on everybody else. AG is going to force it in though, a bit of a starvation play as Chronic operating on very little on the back line. He tried a double jump here to pop it away from Aegeus, but couldn't do it. Aegeus scoring in the bottom right corner. Barry gifting a sub, man. Maybe they gifted sub to Hootie. I did not start the recording for this game. Whoops. It's going to have to come for the stream. Hopefully the stream has been nice and solid. Aegeus, a 4-3 lead with a minute 30 left to go. Once again, has Chronic playing defense on a low amount of boost. Aegeus very intentionally cutting that ball to that back corner and you know cutting off a little bit of his shot opportunities to make sure he for sure grabbed the 100 boost. And I think, you know, while maybe a smart play, trying to keep Chronic starved, I think it ended up resulting in his lost possession. Nice dribble, what a save from Chronic, are you kidding me? AG is a great setup and a good adjustment at the final moments to take it away from where Chronic was planning to save it, but somehow Chronic saves it, pushes it off the crossbar, and he's only down one, but he needs more than just a good save as AG has had the control of offense for what feels like the entire second half of this game. Chronic will need another to tie it up and at least send it to overtime. Aegeus, a bump. Zero boost. Can he get an outplay? Likely not. As he clears this back into his corner. Chronic tap in front of the net. Could not bump Aegeus off the back wall. Chronic trying to keep the pressure on. Not able to stick with this ball though. Aegeus, a very important boost grab. Chronic hopping out of this one as well. Aegeus won the boost steal, not in that corner that you just watched him pick it up, but the other corner, which was all the difference. Made it so he could race to the uh, other corner and force Chronic to fully reset uh, at midfield instead of being able to head right back to net. And that's the difference. I did not save that replay. Rip! But uh, Aegeus going to force a game number five. Chronic versus Aegeus. Game five, Aegeus working his way back into a series that Chronic initially took full control of. Going up 2-0, playing in the Batmobile for the first four games, Chronic is gonna finish it out in the Fennec for game five. Both these guys in the Fennec. I honestly don't think we see Chronic play Fennec very much. Nice, use of the flip reset early, and it's off the post and in. And Chronic stepping up to the pressure of the game five in spectacular fashion. Aegeus trying to defend off the ceiling, but could not get down low enough in time. He did connect hard with Chronic, but he needs to get in the way of the ball if he wants to stop him. 1-0, the wave dash kickoff. Uh, I was gonna say, not in favor of Chronic. It seemed like he had lost the ball and was not gonna be able to win the race to the back corner boost, but Aegeus looking to either wave dash or just double jump, didn't use his flip at all, and hovered weirdly into the corner and gave Chronic an opportunity to steal it away. Chronic, a turn back in field without any boost. He's able to recover in time, but now he's stuck in that with nothing. He comes out for a strong challenge. Aegeus clears it long enough, and Chronic can't get there. Aegeus gave a pretty strong touch here, but a good catch in the corner to force it right back in. Not the easiest of touches, as it got a couple bounces uh, before connecting with Aegeus' car, but he ends up setting it up at the perfect angle to get his nice shot. A fake kickoff, it's gonna work. 2-1 for Aegeus. Chronic baited into tapping him the ball and not able to finish him off with the bump or the demo. 
and Aegis will get a second. Aegis using some uh, interesting kickoff techniques to get an edge in this game. And there's no reason not to. I've always said, but I've actually seen it happen more often, that surprise these top guys don't go for, you know, very serious mix-ups. You see people fake it every once in a while, don't get me wrong. Um, but I feel like there's a lot more different cheesy options that can get you, you know, maybe at least once a game, once or twice a game can get you a good possession as long as you don't do them every single time. Um, kind of like what Daniel used. Nice shot from Chronic. Saved away. Can he recover in time or will Aegeus' long shot go in? It will. Aegeus a third. But, you know, if you do that delay where you're about two car lengths, one or two car lengths off the ball, off the kickoff, and then just tap it back, I feel like that can get you free possessions or even goals um, once or twice. I think once players start to read it, you're in trouble, but I would almost expect to see it slightly more often than I do. Aegeus going to use it to uh, get at least one goal here as he's up one. I didn't see what Chronic said. You're being cringe with these plays. I can't lie, that save was insane. Was a nice save, but he doesn't like the uh, the fake kickoffs and everything else. Nice clear. Good recovery as he doubled that off the wall. Chronic had a shot, but could not force it in. A lead still for Aegeus. His flick puts it in a tough spot. Chronic is not getting scored on winning net though. Aegeus has basically had to force it over him at midfield at some point to find a goal. Once again, a flick opportunity with a waiting Chronic. Chronic saves it away. And in fact, Aegis is gonna give Chronic a lot of time to reset here. So he dribbles it all the way back into his half. He does have the lead right now. And he does have control of almost every single boost. Chronic once again in net, but I tell you what, man, if Chronic is in net and ready, it seems like he's been unable to get scored on. Chronic once again operating with zero boost. As Aegeus tries to slot it just inside the far post, Chronic will take it away. Chronic, after a minute or so of having Aegeus play keep away, seems like he's earned himself a possession and he needs it as he's operating from behind. Aegeus, a missed touch. The second touch slightly recovers it, but I still think he's in a tough spot. Chronic trying to be patient and 50 this one away. Forced back into his own half. 3-2, Aegeus snipes him on the back wall. He doesn't have a lot of boost, but he should be able to score this one before Chronic gets there. The pre-flip, not gonna cut it. Man, not a great spawn for Chronic. I think there's lots of other spawns he's able to get to this one. Either spawn on his side, and he can probably cut it off, and then even the closer spawn on the other side, and I think he has a better chance. There, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of delay kickoff that, you know what, to be fair, he didn't win it, so there's proof right there that it shouldn't be done that much. But I do like that Aegeus is mixing it up and, you know, trying to throw in some maybe non-super conventional kickoffs to stay ahead of the game. Notice he didn't get scored on, and, and one of them has already given him a free goal, so it might be worth throwing in a bunch of them in during a series. This time, he'll pinch it off the wall. Chronic will get way too easy of a third year. Aegeus wanted to send it high, but he did not want to send it off the curve of the back wall and straight back out to Chronic. Chronic kickoff win, hook shot, hook power shot will get him a fourth. The kickoffs had done well for him. The kickoffs are hurting him now as Aegeus on very little boost tried to set up a squishy save, could not get back to the net in time. 4-4 four, four with a minute 10 left to go. A very close game number five. As Chronic gains control of another kickoff, will flip it above and let it roll in nice and slow. Minute left to go, a one goal lead. The kickoffs have gone heavily back in favor of Chronic, and the lead has as well. Aegeus trying to sneak it in the near post with a flick, a soft flick. Chronic able to save it away. He can save the continuation and he's electing not to try and force that in. I guess just a good read that that ball was not coming out. Instead, it was going to roll up and it was not going to be shootable. Oh, wow. Chronic. I think he had an opportunity to get a sixth, but ultimately playing it very, very patient. 
knows that he just does not need to risk. One more goal for getting scored on the other way. Chronic, the flip reset, threatening everything and freezing Aegeus on defense. You see him going up the wall, waiting for Chronic to pull the trigger so he can set up his save, but Chronic's not gonna do it. He's gonna force him into a tough spot on that post. Get him to make a mistake and shoot it high. 6-4, Chronic, looking like he's gonna take this one in game five after a late surge from Aegeus. This dribble is a little bit wide, not gonna be able to find the tight angle. Chronic will push it away. This clear will do it. Chronic will take it in game five. Aegeus keeping it close. I had faith all along, but Chronic ultimately gonna be able to do it. As he sets himself to two and one in the pool play, as only Daniel and Aegeus left to play each other in pool A.